HIV vaccine, Wikipedia audio. The Haemophilus influenza type B vaccine, often called HIV vaccine, is a vaccine used to prevent Haemophilus influenza type B infection. In countries that include it as a routine vaccine, rates of severe HIV infections have decreased more than 90%. It has therefore resulted in a decrease in the rate of meningitis, pneumonia, and epiglottitis. It is recommended by both the World Health Organization and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Two or three doses should be given before six months of age. In the United States a fourth dose is recommended between 12 and 15 months of age. The first dose is recommended around six weeks of age with at least four weeks between doses. If only two doses are used, another dose later in life is recommended. It is given by injection into a muscle. Severe side effects are uncommon. About 20 to 25 percent of people develop pain at the site of injection while about 2 percent develop a fever. There is no clear association with severe allergic reactions. The HIV vaccine is available by itself, in combination with the diphtheria-slash-tetanus-slash-pertussis vaccine, and in combination with the hepatitis B vaccine, among others. All HIV vaccines that are currently used are conjugate vaccine. Medical Uses an initial HIV vaccine was developed in 1977 which was replaced by a more effective formulation in the 1990s. As of 2013, 184 countries included in their routine vaccinations. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, the most effective and safe medicines needed in a health system. The wholesale cost of a pentavalent vaccine which includes HIV in the developing world was 15 US dollars and 40 cents per dose as of 2014. In the United States it costs about 25 to 50 US dollars per dose. HIV conjugate vaccines have been shown to be universally effective against all manifestations of HIV disease with the clinical efficacy among fully vaccinated children estimated to be between 95-100%. The vaccine has also been shown to be immunogenic in patients at high risk of invasive disease. HIV vaccine is not effective against non-type B Haemophilus influenza. However, non-type B disease is rare in comparison to pre-vaccine rates of Haemophilus influenza type B disease. Prior to introduction of the conjugate vaccine, HIV was a leading cause of childhood meningitis, pneumonia, and epiglottitis in the United States, causing an estimated 20,000 cases a year in the early 1980s, mostly in children under 5 years old. Since routine vaccination began, the incidence of HIV disease has declined by greater than 99%, effectively eliminating HIV as a public health problem. Similar reductions in disease occurred after introduction of the vaccine in Western Europe and developing countries. After routine use of the vaccine in the United States from 1980 to 1990, the rate of invasive HIV disease decreased from 4,100 per 100,000 children down to fewer than 1 per 100,000. The CDC and WHO currently recommend that all infants be vaccinated using a polysaccharide protein conjugate HIV vaccine, starting after the age of 6 weeks. The vaccination is also indicated in asplenic patients. Clinical trials and ongoing surveillance have shown HIV vaccine to be safe. In general, adverse reactions to the vaccine are mild. The most common reactions are mild fever, loss of appetite, transient redness, swelling, or pain at the site of injection, 
occurring in 5-30% of vaccine recipients. More severe reactions are extremely rare. Haemophilus influenza type B is a bacterium with a polysaccharide capsule, the main component of this capsule is polyribosyl ribotol phosphate. Anti-PRP antibodies have a protective effect against HIV infections. Thus, purified PRP was considered a good candidate for a vaccine. However, the antibody response to PRP diminished rapidly after administration. This problem was due to recognition of the PRP antigen by B cells, but not T cells. In other words, even though B cell recognition was taking place, T cell recruitment was not, which compromised the immune response. This interaction with only B cells is termed T independent. This process also inhibits the formation of memory B cells, thus compromising long-term immune system memory. PRP covalently linked to a protein carrier was found to elicit a greater immune response than the polysaccharide form of the vaccine. This is due to the protein carrier being highly immunogenic in nature. The conjugate formulations show responses which are consistent with T-cell recruitment. A memory effect is also observed after administration, indicative that memory B-cell formation is also improved over that of the polysaccharide form. Since optimal contact between B-cells and T-cells is required to maximize antibody production, it is reasoned that the conjugate vaccine allows B cells to properly recruit T cells, this is in contrast to the polysaccharide form in which it is speculated that B cells do not interact optimally with T cells leading to the TI interaction. Introduction of HIV vaccine in developing countries lagged behind that in developed countries for several reasons. The expense of the vaccine was large in comparison to the standard AP vaccines. Poor disease surveillance systems and inadequate hospital laboratories failed to detect the disease, leading many experts to believe that HIV did not exist in their countries. And health systems in many countries were struggling with the current vaccines they were trying to deliver. Impact in order to remedy these issues, the Gavi Alliance took active interest in the vaccine. Gavi offers substantial subsidization of HIV vaccine for countries interested in using the vaccine, as well as financial support for vaccine systems and safe injections. In addition, Gavi created the HIV initiative to catalyze uptake of the vaccine. The HIV initiative uses a combination of collecting and disseminating existing data, research, and advocacy to assist countries in the making a decision about using the HIV vaccine. Currently, 61 out of 72 low-income countries are planning on introducing the vaccine by the end of 2009. The first HIV vaccine licensed was a pure polysaccharide vaccine first marketed in the U.S. in 1985. Similar to other polysaccharide vaccines, immune response to the vaccine was highly age-dependent. Children under 18 months of age did not produce a positive response for this vaccine. As a result, the age group with the highest incidence of HIV disease was unprotected, limiting the usefulness of the vaccine. The vaccine was withdrawn from the market in 1988. The shortcomings of the polysaccharide vaccine led to the production of the HIV polysaccharide protein conjugate vaccine. Attaching HIV polysaccharide to a protein carrier greatly increased the ability of the immune system of young children to recognize the polysaccharide and develop immunity. There are currently three types of conjugate vaccine, utilizing different carrier proteins for the conjugation process, inactivated tetanus spasmin, mutant diphtheria protein, and meningococcal group B outer membrane protein.
Multiple combinations of HIV and other vaccines have been licensed in the United States, reducing the number of shots necessary to vaccinate a child. HIV vaccine combined with diphtheria tetanus pertussis polio vaccines and hepatitis B vaccines are available in the U.S. The World Health Organization has certified several HIV vaccine combinations, including a pentavalent diphtheria pertussis tetanus hepatitis B HIV, for use in developing countries. There is not yet sufficient evidence on how effective this combined pentavalent vaccine is in relation to the individual vaccines. Recommendations Side Effects Mechanisms of Action Polysaccharide Vaccine Conjugate Vaccine Developing World Gavi and the HIV Initiative History Polysaccharide Vaccine 2 Conjugate Vaccine 2 Combination Vaccines